Can you imagine living in dark, cramped quarters for 23 hours a day with only one hour outdoors? Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Tew. And I'm Kristen Lee, thanks for joining us. Imagine spending almost every waking moment inside a concrete box the size of a small closet for 29 years. It happened to one man. Reporter Ben Smart, ben Smart spoke to him and he's live outside Central Prison in Raleigh. Kristen, an estimated 95% of inmates eventually make their way back into society. For this reason, Public Safety Deputy Commissioner Tim Moose says it's the function of prison not only to punish inmates, but also to rehabilitate them. One man says his time in solitary confinement was not rehabilitative. It was nothing short of torture. In 1970, Robert Hillary King was imprisoned for a robbery conviction. Two years later, King was found guilty of murdering a prison guard. Courts lengthened his prison sentence and sent him to solitary confinement. That murder charge was overturned in 2001, but for 29 years, King was locked away in a tiny Louisiana prison cell. Solitary confinement means that you are sitting uh, in a room, perhaps 22, 23 hours a day, uh, 6 by 9 by 12. In the heart of downtown Raleigh sits Central Prison. Prison guards escorted us through winding hallways and six automatic metal doors. Finally, we reached what guards call restrictive housing, solitary confinement cells. Prison authorities send inmates here to punish them, to protect them, or to maintain prison order. I'm here inside a restricted housing cell. There's not much room to walk around, so I'm seated here on the bed. There's a metal toilet, a metal sink, a mirror, a cupboard for their items. Some inmates spend up to 23 hours a day in a cell like this one. No one in, no one out. Guards tell us they transfer food and mail through a locked trap door. According to the latest 2015 data, in North Carolina, almost 3,500 inmates are currently in solitary confinement, about 10% of the entire prison population. Of those inmates, 38 are in the highest security. HCON, which means they're inside that cell 24 hours a day, leaving only for medical and dental appointments. Prisoners call this the hole. Stop Torture Now coordinator Christina Cowger says this treatment doesn't help prisoners work through their problems. Solitary confinement is unquestionably torture, and it's torture of the rawest kind and of the cruelest kind because it strips prisoners of their humanity. For Robert King, the negative effects didn't take 29 years. He says one body part was damaged in just six months. My eyes, I had moved in a cell where I couldn't see no more than six feet in front of me, and what happened is my eyes became acclimated to the short distance. King is now a free man and lives in Austin, Texas. He says his life's mission is to campaign against the abuses of the criminal justice system. But for thousands of other prisoners, time in solitary confinement continues. They tell me, well, why aren't you crazy? I let them know, wait, I didn't tell you I wasn't crazy. But I don't think nobody can live through that 29 years in solitary confinement and be sane. The fact that it doesn't appear that I'm impacted, I'm greatly impacted by it. So this prison here behind me is Central Prison. Inside, there are two types of solitary confinement cells, one for general inmates and another for mental health inmates. King told me he kept from going crazy by reading, writing a book, and teaching himself how to make small candies. Next week, we'll have a report about what the North Carolina Department of Public Safety says it's doing to change how inmates are treated and the future of prisons.